This program presents business, government, science, the public, and the planet at a crossroads. Worldwide concern about toxic chemicals is greater than ever. Yet the stories told in the next 15 minutes of what companies are doing to mitigate the risks and increase the benefits of chemicals are scientifically accurate and financially plausible. I came face to face with toxic chemicals for the first time when I was 19 years old, working in the summer at a pulp and paper manufacturing site. I was sent into a large concrete tank to clean it out, slipped and fell into a fluid, and immediately started to burn. I uh, evacuated myself from the tank and hosed myself off. In those days, we were on our own. We didn't know what the chemicals were. We didn't know the safety procedures. We had no data. Thank goodness today we're in a much different place. We've known for a long time about the toxicity of things like PCBs and lead and arsenic. We know that many of the chemicals in our everyday products, everything from cosmetics to paints to the stain guard that we put on our couch, those processes use chemicals that are also known to be harmful. Companies really need to pay attention to the chemicals in their products, otherwise they're going to get hurt. For example, Sony had to pull PlayStations from the Netherlands a few years ago at Christmas time because of a chemical problem in the PlayStations. DuPont got hit with a $100 million lawsuit and a $16 plus million dollar EPA penalty because of a chemical that they use in uh, Teflon frying pans. We are a global integrated forest products company with operations in 18 countries. As a company, our goal is to reduce overall usage of chemicals as well as reducing toxicity and impact to the environment and finding safer alternatives. Delta Airlines, when they institute a program with a third party provider, they were able to reduce their costs by 30%. But what's interesting is they also reduced their insurance premiums because they had less material on their site, less toxic material hanging around, and that's what helped them. One thing that's wonderful, if a scientist invests money in a safer technology, then obviously they're happy, but also the EH&S group is happy because it's a safer technology and the PR people are happy because they can talk about how their scientists are working with safer technologies. So it's a win-win-win scenario. Chemical substances are inseparable from our lives. The human body itself is made up of some 20 natural substances, including carbon, hydrogen, iron, and zinc. But our modern world depends upon and is floating in a sea of human-made chemicals. From the moment we are in the womb until the end of our lives, we live, breathe, eat, and work in a world awash in synthetic chemicals. The World Health Organization estimates there are more than 100,000 human-made chemicals in commercial circulation today, and those appear in some three million products. Synthetic chemicals help feed and clothe us, transport and house us, and in some cases can even save our lives. But of the 200,000 bench chemists working today, only a few hundred have ever been required to study toxicology. The media and the internet remind us on a daily basis that government, public interest groups, and consumers are vocally critical of the health and environmental threats of industrial toxic chemicals. We see an average of two new chemicals coming onto the market every day, and EPA approves those with or without safety studies. We even know that many chemicals used in our everyday products can cross the placenta. And in fact, when we tested newborn babies for chemicals, cord blood from babies fresh out of the womb, we found 287 chemicals in our group of 10 babies, an average of 200 chemicals in the babies that we tested. We're a group of investment managers. We manage about $22 billion in, in assets. And we're basically saying to companies, you should be adopting safer chemicals, policies, and practices. And this is part of a larger wave worldwide of investors going to companies saying, you need to adopt better social and environmental policies because they'll be good for business. Today, regulators in the courts routinely impose hefty fines for companies they feel have improperly handled or disposed of toxic chemicals. And government regulations on the corporate use of hazardous chemicals only promise to increase in the U.S., as they are now doing worldwide. In Canada, federal scientists are asking the government to study the health risks that some 4,000 targeted chemicals pose to consumers in everyday products. 
In Europe, the so-called REACH law affects manufacturers and consumer products worldwide. It is expected to eventually ban or restrict some 1,500 highly hazardous toxic substances. It will also require industries to register and test some 30,000 chemicals total over the next decade. Meanwhile, Rojas, or the restriction of use of hazardous substances, curtailed the use of such toxics as lead, mercury, and cadmium in consumer electronic equipment sold in the European Union. Similar worldwide bans are in the works in other countries and are being proposed in the United States. Well, I've been covering occupational safety and health issues for about 30 years. And during that period, we've seen a lot of concern about chemical hazards in the workplace. I think the sum total of these is that many companies are looking at this, they're looking at the regulatory burden and the economic burden of having toxic chemicals, and what they're saying is if we can reduce that burden overall, we'll be better off in the long term. Looking beyond government mandates, innovative companies today are seeing many positive sides to reducing and eliminating toxic chemicals from their supply chains and their products. These companies know that toxic chemicals come with unacceptable product positioning and financial risks. Rojas Directive has really impacted our whole supply chain in our industry. Even before Rojas was effective, Merix had a lot of experience in providing lead-free materials, lead-free boards to our industry. That's really given us a competitive advantage since our customers have come to us first in terms of being able to provide those kind of products. My organization has been working with companies for over 15 years and I've seen a real shift in what's happening. At the beginning we had companies really looking at chemical use reduction due to compliance. But now we're seeing a second wave. Companies are looking at reducing chemical use really for strictly business reasons. And there's two big reasons. One is a risk reason. Second reason is cost savings. The shift in consciousness to social responsibility has ushered in new, better informed chemical management programs, such as supply chain greening. These solutions include chemical count and toxicity reductions that represent an increasing wave of corporate commitment worldwide. For companies headquartered in North America, this unofficial movement is being led by smart, socially responsible businesses that include such household names as Dell Computers and Delta Airlines, General Motors and General Electric, Walmart and Kodak, 3M and SC Johnson, Intel and Nike, Pfizer and Weyerhaeuser. Many other companies are following suit. We as a company have always taken safety very seriously for our employees. Uh, but over the last four to five years, we've uh, placed an additional focus on our chemical management to reduce the toxicity and the numbers of chemicals uh, that our employees use in our operations. While toxic reduction driven programs are growing internationally, a large number of companies have no program. Worse, despite the best intentions of those organizations, EHS and corporate purchasing professionals, their companies often do not have a truly accurate picture of the chemical hazards they store, use, and dispose of in their operations. After 15 years of providing consulting to the Fortune 500 companies in this country, I can tell you that in forming chemical management solutions, we find that chemicals are entering the workplace in largely uncontrolled manner particularly with regard to toxicity and price. Central purchasing, they're doing a good job with the processed chemicals, the hundreds of thousands or thousands of gallons that cost millions of dollars, but they really have no good idea on the smaller day-to-day -day chemicals. Companies should focus on the lower cost, lower toxic alternatives, and stop buying the high-end, high-cost products. We gain visibility through our software to help companies look at the chemicals they're already buying in each use category. This screen looks at all the gasket sealants actually being used by a multi-site business. As you can see on this chart, the range of toxicity and cost is far too wide between product choices. So we focus on identifying for purchase these lower cost, safer products in the lower left corner. The wide divergence of money spent for redundant chemical products is only part of the unrecognized problems surrounding industrial toxic chemicals. In fact, a toxic chemical's purchase price is just the beginning of its impact on the bottom line. 
Hazardous chemicals also cost far more to handle and dispose of than safer chemicals. One way companies are reducing their costs around chemicals is by reducing the life cycle costs that's associated with every chemical you buy. You're paying for things three times. Okay, you're paying for it when you buy the material. You're also, if it's a hazardous material, material that needs special handling, you have to pay for all the regulatory implications and all of the special care. And thirdly, you have to pay for the disposal at the end of its use. One method of reducing both cost and toxicity is in the worldwide growing trend of green chemistry. The design of chemical products that reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. I started my career in industry. Typically, the way the things worked is a, a chemist would synthesize a molecule and then somebody else would rework the synthesis to gain environmental compliance. I said, well, wouldn't it make sense for me as the, the primary synthetic organic chemist to make them in compliance in the first place? That's fundamentally what green chemistry is, is to recognize the economic advantage to doing it right the first time. There's a myth out there now that in order to have the products and the processes of modern life, of modern society, that you have to use toxic substances, that you have to use toxic chemicals. Green chemistry is shattering that myth every day by having higher performance, higher capabilities, higher value products at the same time as you're protecting human health and the environment. The good news is that uh, many companies are looking at the chemicals in their products and they're realizing that they, if they reformulate, they'll do better in the marketplace. Uh, SC Johnson's Windex product is a perfect example of this. They reformulated the product, got rid of some toxic chemicals, they increased sales, they increased market share, and most importantly, they increased the effectiveness of the product. The business case for reducing the numbers of toxic chemicals in industry is clear. Toxic reductions can mean reduced costs, vendor consolidation, improved productivity, product differentiation, new market opportunities, reduced potential liabilities, better public relations, and better stakeholder relations. One of the first movers to really reduce chemical use was General Motors. And they had an issue where 14,000 chemical suppliers and hundreds of thousands of chemicals in their plants, and they really wanted to bring it down. So what they did is they used a third party provider to come in and help them manage their chemicals. And in their plants now, 30% reduction of chemical use in every plant they put a new program in, 30% reduction in chemical costs. So we see this happening now in other industries. The products on the no new chemicals list would include things like asbestos, uh, lead-based paints. On the restricted list, we want to minimize our use of chlorinated solvents and aerosols. Our method for managing inventory is done through an electronic tool, and that electronic tool allows us to go on site and evaluate what we have uh, on our shelves that then links in with our electronic database. From there, we can use that information to further reduce the number of chemicals on our shelves and find safer alternatives that are more environmentally friendly and more cost effective. Uh, I think everyone can benefit through uh, greener choices, different solutions, and still get the job done. Well, we believe that we can reduce the toxicity of our chemicals by about 60%. We also think that we can reduce the number of chemicals that we use on our sites by at least 50% and we expect to be able to save money in the process of improving our chemical management system. Ultimately, the overriding reason for industry to reduce the numbers of chemicals it uses and to use safer chemicals comes down to a clear vision of the world we want to live in and which we want to leave for the future. One of the most noteworthy corporate goals on reducing hazardous chemicals came late in 2006 when Walmart adopted a sweeping safer chemicals policy aimed at getting some 20 suspect chemicals out of all their supply chain and shelved products. Lee Scott, the chief executive of Walmart, acknowledged the burden of proof that rests on his company in seeking to reduce their toxic footprint when he said, we will not be measured by our aspirations, we will be measured by our actions. To which the news organization CNN replied, of that there is no doubt. The whole world will be watching. For a true corporate visionary, the whole world watching is all the more reason to do the right thing. 
Greening the supply chain drives better environmental policies that are good for business, such as reductions in harmful chemicals from the workplace and the world at large. Through such supply chain greening, industry also saves millions of dollars in the insurance, storage, special handling, and disposal of toxic chemicals. Toxic chemical reductions isn't a wave of the future for industry. It's happening now and gaining momentum every day.